today I'm going to be working on an insanely overpowered project where I can turn one stick into any enchanted book in Hardcore Minecraft. Starting with my small cramped villager trading hall and replacing it with the ultimate villager trading hall. Let's get into it. So in order to do the villager trading project which is just behind this door, we're going to need a lot of resources. And this is how much we're going to need. Now this looks like a lot but don't panic, we've already gathered most of this from clearing out the hole needed for the villager area. Which these resources are in these shocker boxes and barrels. So we've already got three shocker boxes of stuff, but we're going to need a lot more. Now I made the silly mistake of choosing deep slate as one of the main accent blocks. I don't have much deep slate, however unfortunately we have a mine, which goes all the way down to deep slate, so let's gather up what we need. There we go, so that should be most of the resources we need for this project, but we're still missing one key resource. We need a large amount of dark oak. Now looking into my storage, as you can see, we don't have any. So we're gonna have to locate a dark oak forest. And after a bit of exploration, we've found a large dark oak forest. And since I want to do this fast, let's tear down this entire place. Okay, I think that should be more than enough dark oak. Let's head back to base. Now that I have all the resources, let's move these over to the villager area. And there we go, all the resources have been transported over. Having shocker boxes make this so easy. Okay, and here we go. The space has been cleared and oh, would you look at that, we have some guests. Now, if you don't want to end up like those skeletons, you better like and subscribe or else. probably light this place up. Okay so the general idea is I want rooms branching off of this central corridor which will store each of the different villager types. And we have a lot of rooms to do. However before we get to do that I'd like to decorate this area first. Cue the time lapse. Okay now we're feeling it. Let's fill in the walls. And would you look at that? Ah, oh, this is going to be perfect. So I've got these doorways on each side of the corridor, which currently lead to absolutely nothing. This is where we're going to be doing our villager trading, but this won't do. So let's clear enough space to get some villagers in here. Okay, that looks very nice, but I think we need to decorate this place. And there we go. This room has been completed. This room makes heavy use of dark oak, which might be my new favourite texture, along with the deep slate we mined earlier. This design was inspired by a friend of mine, Brock. He did something similar in his hardcore series, which you should totally check out. Now, let's do the rest of them. But first, let's go and repair our tools. And with our tools being fully repaired, let's do this. After placing blocks for several hours, each of these rooms has been completed. But why do we have as many? The reason we have as many rooms is because I want to be able to trade with every type of villager in the game, and there are many different professions. Each profession provides certain resources, like bottles of enchanting, emeralds, and enchanted books, which is why rooms like this are much bigger than the others. This is where the librarians will be. However, in order to get all of those librarians and other villagers, there's a few things we need to do first. So first of all, we need to make use of this setup to set the profession of the villagers send them down here to be turned into zombie and then through here to be cured over and over again. In order to do that we're going to need two things, golden apples which we already have a massive supply of and potions, mainly potions of weakness. Now we have the brune stands for them already here but we don't have anything else. So let's go and get the necessary resources. Oh boy, that's a lot of weakness potions right there. We also partially filled this chest, but you can see it's partially empty. That's because I already went ahead and put down some dispensers with some weakness potions in here. Meaning, we can now test this system. Okay, so at this point we're actually ready to give this whole system a test. So let's get some villagers prepped and press this button to request a villager. Why, hello. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up some fletchers first. Okay, let's place down the fletcher workstation, wait for him to get his job. Okay, so now that he has a job, let's do a trade. One emerald, please. And now that that's done, it's locked in his trades, meaning we can send this guy away. 
away down here. Alright, there we go, it's now been converted. So now we'll be able to move this villager on the conversion area. And there we go, this guy's now finally in place. We need to fill this entire area. Up. Let's get another seven zombie villagers. Alright, there's eight zombie villagers. So now all we need to do is do a splash and then. There we go. Now we need to wait for these guys to cure up. Alright, all of these villagers are cured. But yeah, as you can see, all of these trades are now a bit cheaper. So after converting and curing these villagers five times, we've finally got the trades down to one stick per emerald. That is crazy cheap. And now we get to put them into the rooms we decorated before. However, in order to do that, we're going to need to dig a tunnel. Okay, that tunnel should work. And now we can send these villagers on their way. Okay, now we need to get this villager out of this. Get a water bucket. And there you go, you're trapped. And there we go. We can now trade with this villager. Now we need to do that another seven times. And there we go. All eight of these Fletchers are in place. And I have an idea. I want to give this a test run. Now if you remember, the trades are at one stick per emerald. So keep that number in mind. Because I've got a bunch of sticks here. And I've got an entire shocker box of wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert all of this wood into emeralds. So we're doing some trading stuff and we're left with this much wood. Now I was originally going to trade all that wood for emeralds, but if we look in here, yeah, I've already got an insane amount. So now that we've got all of these fletchers in place, we can move on to the other villager types. Okay, so we're really low on apples, so we're going to focus on getting some farmer villagers. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Now comes the fun part, and we need to do the same seven more times. Okay, all these farmers are ready to go. Okay, let's send you to the room and the workstation. So you're going to need that. Now we need to do that all over again. Now that we've got these farmers into position, we're faced with another issue. They don't have access to the apple tree straight away. But not to worry, all we need to do is level these villagers up one time. That shouldn't take long. Alright, so we've leveled up most of these villagers by one level, and quite a lot of them have the apple Trade, but apple shortage is no longer a problem. So now that the apples are there with, we need a large supply of gold. So I went and they've kept the gold farm for a few hours. So with all this gold, we can start work on getting the other villagers in place. So my plan is we're going to do everything apart from the librarians because they're going to take quite a while to do. So now that the rest of this trading hall is filled, we get the fun task of filling up the librarian area. So let's get to it. Oh my god, the second village we got efficiency 5. That's insane. Infinity, that's pretty good. Respiration 3, I'm gonna need that for all my helmets. Unbreaking 3, power 5, aqua affinity, channel, feather falling 4, and let's kill these guys a bunch of times. Alright, so I've killed these villagers twice so far and I've got their trades down to one emerald per book. Well, all of them except this one, this one is still quite expensive. And this is for the efficiency 5 trade. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move the other villagers into the trading hall and I'm going to leave that guy there for the next round of curing attempts. Okay so I've got all the librarians we've done so far into position and they're spread out a little bit because I'm sorting these villagers by category. So on the left here we've got all of our tools and weapon trades and on the right everything to do with armour. And now with the space we have left we'll fill them up as we need. And speaking of filling these up that's what I'm doing next. Let's just say this is going to be a lot of fun and it's going to take a lot of time. So after several long hours we finally have this trading hall filled up. Well everything apart from these three places right here. I'm going to save these for future enchantments. So now that we have this trading hall complete, I actually want to make use of it. So we have all of these emeralds to play with, plus the potential of making a lot more. And we have many villages, so let's put both of them together. Now up until now, these are the only tools I've ever had in this world. But as you can imagine, I like doing big projects, which means one set of tools simply won't work. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to make use of our toolsmiths in here to trade for enchanted diamond pickaxes. And then we take these pickaxes and make them full on work picks. In order to do that, we're going to need a few shocker boxes, which I think five shocker boxes should do. Now before we can get these diamond tools, we have a bit of an issue. We're going to have to level all of our toolsmiths all the way up to max level, which will require emeralds and a lot of iron. Good thing I've got an iron farm. That only took about 20 minutes and we managed to get all of these villagers leveled up to master level, giving us the diamond pickaxe trade. Let's fill up a shocker box. So I've got a bit of a dilemma. These diamond pickaxes are all enchanted, so we can't really apply many more enchantments, but there's a simple solution. We take these pickaxes through here and use these grindstones to remove the enchantments. Now that's much better. Now we need to do the same for unbreaking, efficiency, mending and simple touch points. 
Now that's an insane amount of enchanted books. Before we make use of these, I'm going to enter my inventory. I'm going to pick these up. And now we're going to make our way over to the gold farm because let's just say I don't have any enough experience for this. And I have 500 levels right now. Okay, so I've crafted this up a bunch of anvils and I don't know if 15 is going to be enough. Hopefully it will be. So yeah, my process is essentially I'm going to take one pick out at a time, take out all of the books we need. So I'm going to go with the efficiency five first. We're going to go in order of the enchantment level in Unbreaking 3. Then we're going to do is we're actually going to add our Silk Touch and Mending books together and then we do this and then that way in the long run the amount of xp we use will be cheaper and there we go i now need to do that another 26 times which as you can imagine is going to take a long time well, we're so close to finishing we only had three pickaxes left but we ran out of levels guess i'm gonna have to get some more okay that should be more than enough levels let's get these three final tools enchanted that wasn't anywhere near enough experience but we've got all of these pickaxes enchanted now let me do a quick clean up here awesome now let's take our pickaxes and head home and since we decided to return the base i made the decision to clear out our ender chest and sort things out a little bit so now we have our sugar box of pickaxes here followed by our food and our iron and you may be wondering where the rocket sugar box is i'm carrying that on my all tens which you can see right here we are running a bit low on rockets but i'll be dealing with that at some point in the future now the other reason why I came back here is we have a bunch of diamonds in storage because so I had to go mining a few times and I was going to fortune these up but I came to a realisation you see this diamond pick I'm holding? It's only fortune 2 we can do much better than that okay let's buy a fortune 3 book place one of these anvils and apply fortune 3 to our pickaxe sweet now our other tools could probably do with being modified as well but they're not really all that important so I'm just going to leave them as is for now oh and when I was flying over here I spotted something really weird I think an enderman has been here these guys are very annoying. And from that stack and 20 diamonds, we got three stacks of diamonds in return. I don't even know why I'm bothering fortuning these things up because it's not as if I'm using them for anything. 21 blocks of diamonds, that's not bad. If you liked that video, you should watch this one next.